Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. I'm E.G. Marshall. I've been waiting for you all day with a story of sheer horror. Don't look for dismal mansions or ghostly cries in the night. Our story of horror takes place in New York City. From the glittering atmosphere of Carnegie Hall to the fashionable shops of Fifth Avenue and the exclusive penthouses of Park Avenue. To Hilda Turner, these were so far above her reach she hardly dared dream about them. But then... All of us have our dreams. They cost us nothing, and they do make a pleasant change of pace when reality becomes a treadmill. Hilda Turner dreamed, and something happened. Our mystery drama, What a Change in Hilda, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Bob Duran and stars Lois Nettleton. It is sponsored in part by Jovan Collections for Women and for Men and Buick Motor Division. I'll return shortly with Act One. Everyone wants more out of life. Did you ever meet someone totally satisfied? The more we have, the more we want, it seems. But then there are those who've resigned themselves to mediocrity. They know they'll go no further and settle down to what Henry David Thoreau called lives of quiet desperation. Hilda Turner is just such a woman. At 30, she is plain, unglamorous, and married to a man who loves her and whom she loves, but there's little money from his taxi cab job. And her salary at Hobbs Department Store, just about, but not quite, makes up the difference between red and black each month. Hilda doesn't really regret or resent her life. It just bores her. What time is it, Brad? Mm, Ten o'clock. Want to watch the news? No. Oh, I'll just put up my hair and go to bed. You finished with the paper? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll just look at the headlines. One cup of coffee? Mm, yeah, if you're having some. Yeah, might as well. Instant okay, or should I make a pot? Uh, instant. Brad? What? I can't believe this. What? You remember Grace Hutchins? The girl I used to work with at Bradley's? Grace? Grace, uh, yeah, yeah, sort of. Short, short, blonde hair. She used to come up to the place lots of uh -huh, times. Uh -huh. I haven't seen her for, uh, oh, I don't know, a year or so. Not since I left to work for Hobbs. Yeah, yeah, I remember. So what? It says here she's making her singing debut at Carnegie Hall this Sunday evening. I didn't know she sang. She didn't. That's why I don't believe it. Oh, she, she used to talk about wanting to sing, but she didn't have the voice. She was terrible. Even she admitted it. Well, then it's not the same Grace Hutchins. The picture's right here. Look, look. Now, that's the same Grace Hutchins I work with. Uh-huh. I haven't seen her in a year. So she found a good teacher. Brad, it takes years to sing good enough to sing at Carnegie Hall. You don't do it in one year. Well, she's doing it. It's just unbelievable. Brad, we've got to go. What? We've got to go to that recital. Me at Carnegie Hall? I wouldn't miss this for the world. I've got to go and see and hear this for myself. Well, go with Audrey. Oh, no. Please, Brad. I want to go with you. Well, okay. But I'm not going to enjoy it. Oh, gee, I, I sort of wish I had a fur to wear. Maybe Mrs. McCloskey would lend me her fox. Oh, come on, Hilda. It's bad enough to be going to Carnegie Hall without dressing up. you got no style, Brad. <laughs> but I love you anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll ask Mrs. McCloskey tomorrow. Okay. And you stop and get the tickets. Oh, I just can't wait to hear Grace Hutchins <laughs> sing and see the inside of Carnegie Hall. <laughs> Isn't this thrilling? Yeah. Look at the earrings on that blonde. I'll bet they're real diamonds. Oh, I wish I had a diamond. What's that on your finger? Glass? No, no, no. I, I meant, no, you know. But I'm glad I borrowed Mrs. McCloskey's fur. It makes me feel special. Honey, you look as good as any of them. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, hey, everyone's going in. Come on, let's get our seats. <laughs> I think you're right. I know I am. 
I can't believe what I'm hearing. She's gosh. What do you mean? I'm going backstage. Not me, not me. Oh, friend, she'll remember me. She'll see Yeah, well, okay, I'll have a smoke in the lobby. Oh, all right, all right. I'll, I'll meet you in a few minutes. Okay. Grace? Honey? Remember me? Oh, Hildy! Hildy Turner! Oh, how good of you to come. I couldn't believe it was you, Grace. Oh, well, I can't either sometimes. Oh, Hildy, did you, did you enjoy the recital? Oh, you're terrific. Oh, I'm you always said you couldn't sing. Well, it's been like a dream. Ever since I met Dr. Sattler. Oh, huh? Dr. Sattler. The Center for Transposition Science. Oh, dear, they're waving at me. Look, uh, Hildy, I've got to run. Oh, but I'll call you. I, I have a hectic schedule, but I'll call, I promise. <laughs> uh, are you still at the same place? Yes. Yeah, well, I'll call. I can't believe it. We could enjoy old times better without him hanging around. <laughs> well, it's still the same charming place I remember. It's so delightfully simple. Yes. I, and you still have the linden tree out there. Mm-hmm. Oh, you remember when the super wanted to cut it down and you climbed up and sat in it until he gave up? Ah, that tree and the birds are my only touch with nature in this second floor walk up. Uh, well, do you still feed the birds? Winter and summer. Oh. But, but it's you I want to talk about, Grace, not me. The last time I saw you was a year and a week ago. I looked it up in the calendar. Now, how could you do all this in one year? Well, I found a new life through transposition science. Yeah, you mentioned that backstage. Well, actually, it's the Center for Transposition Science, run by Dr. Sadlou. Oh, he is fabulous. Oh, uh, one of those cults? Oh, no, not what you think, not at all. You see, Dr. Sadlou has a very practical approach to changing your life. I put myself in his hands and... Here I am. So, of course, I had to work. It, it wasn't overnight, but he introduced me to a fantastic voice coach, one of his disciples. I, you know, I couldn't believe the progress I made. It's almost like a miracle. It's all in how you think and, and meditate. His meditation sessions are the key. You, you bring yourself out of yourself. Hmm. He must be expensive. One hundred dollars. You're kidding. No, that's all. Hildy, are you interested? Is there something you'd like to change in your life? Oh, no, no, no. No, I'm, I'm fine. Oh, everybody wants something, I guess, but no, no. No, I, I wouldn't dream of it. Oh, you don't say that as though you meant it. Look, I'll give you his address. He likes referrals from fellowship members. No, I, I don't think so. Oh, honey, think it over, huh? He says, quote, Everyone's heart's desire can be theirs if only you believe. Unquote. Well, it's a little clumsy, but then he he's a little strange. <laughs> You're the living example of a miracle. I've only just begun to live. And you could too, Hildy. If there's something you really want, want enough to believe in Dr. Sato, think it over. <laughs> forget about going out to dinner tonight. I just got fired. What? Nice anniversary present for us, huh? Why? You've always been one of... Other guys with more seniority than me. Fares are down, expenses are going up. They had to let 12 drivers go. Oh. Damn, I missed it by one. Bonnie Tucker had only had one month on me. So he stays, I go. Oh, well, maybe it's temporary. 
Better to hire you back. Eating is not temporary. I'm working. I'll get something else. I'm not going to sit around. But it sure burns. Well, it's not going to spoil our night. Heaven knows we get little enough going out. Some celebration, huh? We're not celebrating your job. We're celebrating us. I'm sorry, hon. You're right. I'm lucky to have you. <laughs> oh, don't worry about it, Brad. Things are going to get better for us. I promise. Hello, Grace. I've thought it over. Will you introduce me to Dr. Satlow? Park Avenue Penthouse, yes. How does he do it for $100 a client? Well, he practices what he preaches. Oh, Hilda, I'm glad you decided to see him. You'll change. You'll see. Oh, here we are. Good grief. Come on. It's absolutely empty. Not a stick oh, of Oh, Dr. Tetlew believes material things cloud the mind. He'll explain. Now, follow me and don't say anything. Mm. We're going to his chamber. There he is. He's meditating, but he knows we're here. Come in, dear Grace. Come in. Oh, Dr. Satlew, this is Hilda Turner. Dear Hilda, it's good of you to come. Dear Grace tells me you wish to join the fellowship. Oh, uh, yes. Sit down, please. On the floor, here with me. <clears throat> I don't use furnishings or trappings, as you can see. Because that's just what they are. Traps to draw our attention away from the real truth of existence. Of beauty. Of life. I, uh, yes. I, I understand. But don't be afraid. So many people are afraid of the truth. Oh, Dr. Satlow, I'll leave now. I have a lesson with Professor Rice. Go in peace, dear Grace. And sing like a bird. I'll call you tonight, Hilda. Thanks for everything. Now, dear Hilda, let's begin with a moment of meditation. Empty your mind, dear Hilda. Empty. 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 To be refilled with truth. Believe in me. Believe in me and you will receive all you desire. Empty. 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 Tell me what it is you want to achieve with transposition science. Well, um, this may sound dumb, but uh, I want things. Things don't necessarily make us happy. Oh, I know that. I, I, I'm not unhappy. I love my husband. We have a good life. But I'm... I'm so bored. I just... I, I just want some excitement. I'm not ashamed to admit that I... I want a fur coat. Jewelry. Real jewelry. I want... I want some glamour. Not such a tall order. Oh, for me it is. There's no getting out of a rut. That's why... I thought you could help me. After what you did for Grace... Yes, dear Grace has almost achieved her heart's desire. Almost? I'd say she's there now. Oh, there's, there's more for her, because she believes. Can you, can you help me, Dr. Sadler? I can show you the way. Let me meditate a day or two. Then we shall know just which path to take. Your, your husband knows of your intent? Not yet. I'll have to tell him. I shall expect you on Saturday at 1 p.m. Yes. I'll arrange to take the afternoon off. Then welcome, dear Hilda. Welcome to a new life. Well, if that Luke can do for Hilda what he did for dear Grace, it looks as though Hilda and Brad's troubles are over. It's true that faith can move mountains, and Hilda seems to have faith. But I wonder... I wonder... We'll see each path Dr. Setlou suggests for dear Hilda when I return with Act Two. <laughs> Hilda Turner has placed herself in the hands of Dr. Setlou in hopes of improving her life. Dr. Setlou promises her heart's desire. But whether it's the best thing for Hilda remains to be seen. The child who eyes and eats too much of the chocolate cake pays the penalty of a sick stomach. 
In one way or another, Hilda will pay a penalty for achieving her dream. After all, you never get anything for nothing. Now, dear Hilda, I've decided the way for you is modeling. Modeling? Certainly. You want excitement, glamour. You want to wear furs, expensive clothes, jewels. A fashion model is the logical course. And models make $60, $80, $100 an hour. <laughs> you must be kidding. With my looks and my figures? Ah, but we're going to change those. We are going to turn you into a model. I do have connections. A fashion model? Oh, that's really far out. Dear Hilda, do you think it's appealing? Oh, yes. The last thing I'd ever seen me as is a model. Dear Grace had no singing voice when she came to me. But she did have two essential things, desire and faith. I'm not sure you have either one now. Oh, please, I'll try. It's just all taken me by surprise. I really want to change. I'll try. I hope you will. You are a beautiful person. Underneath, deep down, where beauty counts. That's what I want to get at. Your inner goodness and beauty. When I have those, then you will have the beautiful face and figure. When we start to study, you'll realize that my secret is really nothing but truth. You'll see, dear Hilda. You'll see. Hildy. Hildy, where have you been all afternoon? You weren't at work. I went to Hobbs. They told me you took the afternoon off. Yes. Yes, I did, Brad. Why? Okay, you've got to know. I told Dr. Sattler what I'd have to tell you. Dr. Sattler? The man who did so much for Grace Hutchins. I went to see him. What for? To help me. Us. It's called the Center for Transposition Science. Oh, brother, he's just a phony after your money, Hildy. Show him what's in your bank book and he'll slam the door in your face. I've, I've got to feed the birds. It, it just so happens his entire cost is one hundred dollars. For what? For for showing you how to get things. Things I want. All I want is for you to forget it. I don't want you messing around with some freaky cult. You can't do any harm. There you are. Come on, come and get. Those guys get you thinking all mixed up. We got enough problems with me out of work as it is. Oh, there's our first Robin. Oh, hello, Robin. Yeah, but. That's why I'm doing it, Brad. Look what happened to Grace Hutchins. Uh, from a nothing to a concert singer in a year. So, so, so what's he going to do for you? Make you a movie star? A model. <laughs> I, I told him I wanted excitement, glamour, a fur maybe, some jewelry. A model. He says I can make $60 or more an hour modeling. We can live a lot better than we do, Brad. I'm happy with us the way we are. We don't need his kind of help. I'll get it. Yeah. Yeah, hello, Max. Oh, no. Well, when did it happen? Yeah, yeah, that's a shocker. Uh, how's his wife taking it? Sure, sure, sure. I'll, I'll be in. Eight o'clock tonight. Yeah, okay, Max. Brad, what happened? Bonnie Tucker was killed in an accident today. Oh, oh terrible. A drunk plowed through the divider on the drive. A real head on. The drunk walks away and Bonnie's dead. Oh, Anyway, Max wants me in for the night shift tonight. Yeah? I got my job back. Good morning, dear Hilda. Good morning, Dr. Sattler. And so we begin our study. Much of the work will depend on you. I'm not a miracle worker. I show the way, but you must follow. The first thing I want you to do when you get home today is remove every mirror from your home. What? No mirrors, because the first thing we must get rid of is vanity. As the deep, beautiful, real you comes to the surface, your looks will begin to change. If you notice it, dwell on it, your vanity will stand in the way of our work. Does that present a problem? Oh, no, no, I, I guess not. Brad doesn't shave. He wears a beard. But he's not going to like it. He wasn't too keen on my taking up this, uh, the science. But I'll, I'll convince him. He's working double shifts at the cab company. He's not home much anyway. Very well. We'll try it. Now, this book is the Bible of transposition science. I want you to start reading one chapter a day. 
We'll meet once each week for meditation together. The book shows you how to meditate daily by yourself. But our sessions together, that's where the real meaning is. I'll be here next Saturday, then. Yes. And now for our first meditation. Empty your mind, Hilda. All thought must leave. Only emptiness, whiteness, open to the spirit, the truth. Only emptiness, to fill yourself with the truth. Empty, empty, empty. Hilda? Hilda? Oh, what? Oh, what are you said, Lou? What, what happened? We were meditating. How do you feel? As though... As though I wasn't here. Good. Deep meditation. You'll be all right. Rest a moment, and then you can leave. Yes. Georgette, I'm having one of my disciples help you to a cab. Go home. Rest. And start reading. Yes. I'll, I'll be back next Saturday. You called, Doctor. Georgette, this is dear Hilda. Help her get a cab, please. Certainly. Uh, uh, thank you. We're going to be very successful, dear Hilda. Very successful. Are you all right? Yes. Fine. I, I can really go myself. No trouble. Do you work for Dr. Sattler? In a way. I'm a disciple. Is that what I am? No. You're a student. You're a friend of Grace Hutchins? Yes. Grace introduced me to Dr. Sattler. He is good. You've made a wise decision. I'm looking forward to studying with Dr. Sattler. I want better things for Brad and me. And after I saw what he did for Grace... She is quite an example. Huh. There are plenty of cabs on Park Avenue. Oh, there's one. Cab! I'll see you next week, Hilda. Good luck. Thank you. Hilda, what the devil are you doing here? Dad. Who is that dame? Uh, what's going on? I was expected... Oh, oh well, I, I went to see Dr. Sattler again. I thought you weren't going to mess around with that baloney. This where he lives? Mm, up in the penthouse. Yeah, well, he's got a good neighborhood. I'll say that for him. But you told me... I didn't promise anything, Brad. I said I just wanted to see. Oh, please, please, go along with me, Brad. If it starts to hurt us, I'll give it up. I just hope you don't get in too deep to give it up. Empty, Hilda. Empty your mind to nothingness. Whiteness. Let the truth come through. Oh, I'm bushed. Coming to bed, Hildy? No, I'm going to study some more. You were up till four this morning. I, I, I put up with the crazy idea of getting rid of the mirrors, but this thing's taking all your time. I'm interested. I've got to read through this chapter before my meditation tomorrow. All right. I've got to be up at six. Working two shifts is murder. It sure brings in the dough. You're almost ready, Hilda. The beauty within is coming to the surface. Coming out for everyone to see. Soon, soon now, we'll have our heart's desire. Now, I want your jet to work with you on makeup and posture. We must enhance that natural beauty that's coming out. And I'm really going to be a fashion model? Well, we're trying. One day, dear Hilda, you'll wear more furs and jewels than you could hope for. You'll be the envy of every woman. <laughs> believe it. You like what you see? Well, you're a knockout, all right. But you sure ain't Hilda. <laughs> of course I am. And then I'm not. Not the old Hilda, anyway. <laughs> Takes some getting used to. Dr. Sattler's method works. Oh, I'm dying to see Grace's reaction. Yeah, you're different, all right. Beautiful. But somehow, Hilda, I... What? Well, I mean... Where's my wife? You'll get used to me, Brad. And just wait till I start making some real money. We'll move out of this dump This place and... is okay. Don't get snooty on me now. Hello? Oh, Hilda, it's Grace. How are you? Grace! 
Grace, I was going to call you. How about lunch on Monday? I love it. I can spring my surprise. Oh, I was going to do the same thing. Oh, how are you making out with Dr. Satinu? Isn't he fabulous? He is. Just wait till you see. Monday at 1? Uh, I'll have to make it at 12. Is that okay? Oh, sure. I'll meet you at the Beverly. The Beverly? <laughs> well, we are coming up in the world. <laughs> Thank you, pardon. Grace, it's me, Hilda. Hilda? Well, you're not Hilda. Ah, yes, I'm Hildy, little old Hildy Turner. Wait, wait, it's just startling. Uh, uh, no, no, I see it really is you. It's all because of Dr. Satlou. Uh, but, but you said you had a surprise. Oh, oh, yes, but... Oh, honey, after seeing you, mine isn't all that much. What is it? Well, I, I'm going on tour. Worldwide. Oh, Grace, that is exciting. Well, Dr. Sutton says I, I should sing to the world. Where are you going? Oh, I don't know yet. The bookings haven't all been worked out, but oh, I'm so excited. I guess we both are. Oh, here comes the waitress. Let's order a big drink and toast Dr. Sutton. You are ready, dear Hilda, to try for a modeling career. Don't you agree, Georgette? The Fisher Agency will take her in a minute. I'm so nervous. Things never bothered me before. Well, you're starting an exciting new life. I feel like Grace must feel starting out on a concert tour. Ah, yes. Dear Grace has told you about Lance. She said you told her to sing to the world. I think that's nice. <laughs> and you, dear Hilda, will be admired by the world. Why don't you go home now, get some rest, and be sure to meditate. Georgette will be in touch with you after she sets up the appointment. She'll tell you what to do. All right. I'll, uh, I'll try not to be nervous. You'll hear from me, Hilda. She'll make it. She's perfect. Of course she will. She ought to have some fun first. She will, just as Grace has had her fun. Now Grace must get down to serious work. Yes, her tour. Dear Grace is going to sing her heart out. <laughs> Wouldn't it be grand to be able to get whatever it is you want? Some people do, and they're happy with it. Others do, and find they didn't want it after all. Grace and Hilda are both about to get what they've always wanted. But in their case, it's not quite what they expected. We'll find out just what happens when I return shortly with Act Three. Hilda Turner is on her way to fulfilling her fondest wishes to be glamorous, have an exciting life, furs, jewels. Dr. Satlou and his disciple Georgette have already helped her to a physical transformation. Now she seems on the threshold of a modeling career. Not bad for a girl who only a few months ago was a plain housewife with a job at Hobbs' department store. Huh? Hildy, that you? Of course. Who were you expecting? I was just... Catching a couple of winks between shifts. What? What are you doing home at three o'clock? You're supposed to be at work. If you're referring to that insipid little job in that loathsome department store, I am finished with that. I gave them my notice today. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's with this five dollar award stuff? What do you mean? Insipid, loathsome. What the devil do they mean? Don't you understand English? English? Yeah, sure. How come the fancy talk all of a sudden, Hildy? Hey, are you all right? Of course. I don't like the look in your eye, Hildy. I think this crazy doctor or whatever he is is filling your head with a lot of bull. Dumb talk. Did you quit your job? Oh, Brad, for heaven's sake, I'm starting work next week as a model. A model? At $60 an hour. 75 when I'm better known, they said. I had my interview today, and I got my first assignment. Next Tuesday. Modeling what? Jewelry. For Bradstone. It's a photo session. No, but, but there's something here I don't like. You get 60 bucks an hour? Yes, next Tuesday. Over my dead body. I know what goes on in those photo sessions. Oh, Brad, don't be disgusting. The face and hand shop of jewelry. Come on, Hilda, wake up. This phony medicine man's taking you for a ride. Brad, this is something I've never dared dream about. Me, a fashion model. And now I've got it, and I am going to do it. Yeah, well, this guy says no. And who is this guy? A little cabby who never made any more than 80 dollars. I'm a hundred... Now, you just wait a minute, Hildy. 
We, we, we never talked like this to each other before. You never talked like this to anyone. Now, what's happening to you? For the first time in my life, I am going somewhere. Excitement. Glamour. Look. You always look good to me. Oh, Brad, how can you say that? I was a mousy little nothing, and you know it. No. No, I'm getting what I want. I'm going to wear fur, diamonds, fine clothes. Oh, boy. Have my hair done every day, and it won't be long before I'll have the money to own those things. That fake's got you thinking crazy. That's what it is, crazy. We'll see who's crazy. Yeah, we'll see. i got to get back to work. And when I'm done, we'll talk this out. Brad, wait. Go feed your birds. Damn the birds. I don't care what he thinks. I'm getting tired of it. You know it all, Cabby. Shut up! Huh. That's strange. All the birds are gone but that one. Hello, pretty nightingale. Don't you want any seed? No? You just want to sing. Go ahead, you beautiful thing. Sing your little heart out. So next Tuesday you begin your career. Oh, I'm so excited, Dr. Satlou. It's a dream come true. Of course. I called Grace Hutchins to tell her the news, but uh, someone answered and said she'd gone on tour already. Ah, yes. Grace is flitting about, singing to the world. I thought she'd call to say goodbye. Perhaps she was so busy she forgot. And Hilda, don't you forget to meditate daily. Particularly when you go for your first job. Yes, this is Hilda Turner. Oh, you'll have to talk with my agent, Pat Smith at the Fisher Agency. I'm booked pretty solid for the next two months, I think. Lunch on Friday? I'd love it. But I think I have a show at the Waldorf. I'll call you back. Worrying, darling. My husband works till 1 a.m. Pour some more wine. We have three whole hours. you what? I'm through, Brad. I'm moving off. I don't know why I've stayed as long as this. But, but, honey, I haven't seen anything of you in three weeks. But you're still my wife. I'm about to change that, too. What? Don't be stupid, Brad. Can't you see I've outgrown you? You're a small-time hack driver, satisfied with a newspaper and a can of beer. I'm, I'm just, I'm tired of you, and I'm tired of this cheese box we call an apartment. I'm taking a place in Dr. Satlou's building. I'm moving with a whole new crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the whole trouble with you, Dr. Satlou. Well, I'm going to fight him for you. You are stupid. You think you're going to win me like a prize? You're a caveman. You don't even look like one. You're not hurting me. I'm going to Satlow and stop this crazy stuff right now. You can't. Oh, yes, I can. Just watch me. You can't ruin my career. There's nothing you can do. I know where he lives. I picked you up in front of his building. I'm going to kill him. Brad, don't be stupid. If you say that once more, I'll kill you. Now, don't try to stop me. I'm going there now, right now. And you stay here like I get back. I'm going to take care of that guy. Then i got to move Hilda out of here. Get her away from New York and her crazy ideas. It was parked between 88... And 89. Yeah, step on it. I'm gonna beat that light. Watch out, you crazy devil! I suppose I should feel something. But I don't. Not a thing. Transposition science gives us the strength to face life's trials. My husband is dead, and I don't feel a thing. Well, I was getting ready to leave him anyway. I was thinking of taking an apartment here in your building. Splendid. We can continue our work. Dear Hilda, that part of your life is over. Think only of yourself, your beauty, your career. Hello, Pat. Hilda. Yes, I know. That, that's why I'm calling. I can't make it. It's stiff all over. Must be coming down with the flu. No, no, you'd better cancel for the next couple of days. Hello, Georgette? 
Dr. Sattler called for me. Yes, Hilda. He's in the prayer room. Come. You look disturbed. Something wrong? I'm not feeling too well. Ah, Hilda. Come in. I was meditating about you. I haven't been well, Dr. Sattler. I thought it was the flu. Aches, stiffness. It's been all week. Those things usually last only a day or two. Sit down. If I can. It's so stiff. I have been meditating, dear Hilda, because there's one last thing we must do to ensure your career. Well, I haven't worked for a week because of this flu. It is not the flu, dear Hilda. It's a change in your body. Necessary to make sure that your beauty never fades. What? What do you mean? We are even, dear Hilda. You promised to believe in me, and you did. I promised you beauty, furs, jewels, glamour. We both have what we wanted. You have your heart's desire, and I have your soul. My soul? My soul? Yes, your soul. I took it from you and put it on your face, and there, dear Hilda, it shall remain forever. <laughs> I wonder where I am. Strange. I have a feeling people are looking at me. I can just make out the faces. Yes. Yes, there are people behind the glass. And the lights. It's so odd. I don't feel uncomfortable. But why am I here? I can't remember anything at all. I don't know why I'm here. But worse, I don't know where I am. I can't seem to move. Not a muscle. I can't even turn my head. Someone's coming in. Maybe I'll know. Why do they want to change the window again? We just dressed this new mannequin yesterday. Ronnie decided the sable and the turquoise didn't go together. I could have told him that in the first place. You can't tell Ronnie anything. When his mind's made up, uh, pull the drapes and let's get going. Uh, it was a lot easier when these things were abstract wire shapes. They showed off the styles better, too. These lifelike figures attract too much attention to themselves. This one's sure lifelike. I wonder where Ronnie had it made. When we try to be something we're not, we often end up losing what little we had to begin with. Grace Hutchins doomed herself to an eternity of singing from the treetops. Hilda Turner to an eternity of frozen beauty in a department store window. Satan or Lucifer, take your pick, as Dr. Satlow was happy to give both women their heart's desire in return, of course, for the one thing the devil cherishes more than anything else, a human soul. Ugh, a chill just went through me. We'll warm up when I return shortly. If you're longing for something... Be careful how you go about getting it. Trying the easy way out may prove to be a hard road to follow, particularly if you don't know whom you're dealing with. The road to you-know-where is paved with good intentions, but uh, you-know-who always seems to be waiting. You never get anything for nothing. Well, there's one exception. Our mystery theater plays... You can enjoy them for nothing more than your attention and your imagination. Our cast included Lois Nettleton, Robert L. Green, Bryna Rayburn, and Nat Poland. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Allied Van Lines and True Value Hardware Stores. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.
tonight's WOR Mystery Theater was also brought to you in part by ShopRite Supermarkets, where you get a lot more for a little less. The preceding program was furnished by CBS Radio.